Okay, so we're going to look at bearings with some more triangles and some stuff that might get a little bit more challenging. So remember, with right angle triangles, you can use Pythagoras and Trig. Um, you might have to draw on your north lines, and remember that they'll all be parallel, so you can use your co-interior and all those different rules. And look at our first problem. Find the bearing from A to B. So I stand at A, and I point north, and I point myself around clockwise until I'm pointing at B. And notice here I have angles on a straight line, so that's going to be 180 minus 57 is equal to 123 degrees. And sometimes it's helpful to label what you find on your diagram, because you might use it later. And that's angles on straight line equal 180 degrees. My next question, find the bearing in the other direction from B to A. So that means now I stand on B and I point myself north. And I have to figure out from there, going clockwise, how far around do I spin until I'm pointing back at A again. So, some of you might already see this, but I've got some parallel lines here. And don't be afraid, you can also continue them on if it's helpful to see that. Sometimes it's not. Um, but there's two different ways that I can find out some information. And what I'm looking at here is that I notice I've, I need to find that bearing, and I've got one piece missing from a perfect 360. So I knew if this angle, if I know what this angle is, then I know it's going to be 360 minus whatever that is. So there's two ways that I can find this. One would be to use co-interior angles with a U shape. But another way to do this would be to use Z angles looking at it this way. 57 should be equal to that one because of alternate angles. So I can say that this is equal to 57, and my reason for that is just going to be alt angles equal on parallel lines. And then now I have enough information for angles at a point. So 360 minus 57 is going to be equal to 303 degree bearing, and that's from B to A. Last question here. Find the total distance around the triangle. So I need to give you a bit of information to be able to do that. I didn't actually put enough on the diagram for you. So I'm going to tell you first off that this is 10 meters. That distance between C and B is 10 meters, so you want to add that to your diagram. So now I've got enough information. Uh, this is just kind of a recap of using sine, cosine, and Pythagoras type information. If I want to know the total distance around the triangle, I've got 10 meters here. I need to figure out what that is, and I need to figure out what that one is. So I might label this one x and this one y, and I need to figure out what they are. So I'm going to look for x first, and I notice that I have the opposite angle here to that angle, and the adjacent one to that. So I know, because I'm using an angle, I'm going to use sine or cosine or tangent. And here I've got an opposite and adjacent, so I'm going to use tangent. T-O-A. And I'm looking for the adjacent, so I'll cover it up. So x is going to be equal to the opposite, 10, divided by tangent of 57, which is equal to 6.5 meters, if we round it. Okay, so now I know that this is 6.5 meters. I know two sides. I could use Pythagoras to find the third one, or I can continue to use trigonometry. It doesn't really matter. So, just to role model the difference, I might actually use the y, or the Pythagoras, real quick. So trying to find y, I've got a side, a side, and I'm looking for one more. I'm looking for the long side there. So y is going to be equal to the square root of 10 squared plus 6.5 squared. I'll add it up. And that's going to be equal to 11.9 meters. So again, you might have to pull in sine, cosine, or Pythagoras, but that should get you there. Um, and we've got one more example we can look at of these slightly more challenging problems. So I might put this into a second video just so this one doesn't get too long. Um,
Yeah, I'll just go for it. You guys can have a long video. Saves you trying to find the other one. Okay. So a running course starts at Z. So this starts down here, so this must be point Z. And it goes north, a distance of 2 kilometers. It then turns east for 1.5 kilometers. So I'm going from Z north for 2 kilometers, I'm going to write that on, 2. And then I'm going to turn east up here for 1.5 kilometers. And one thing I need to remind myself of is that the direction between north and east is 90 degree angle. So I know if I was heading north and then turning east, I have 90 degrees in that corner. So at point Y, the runners turn back to Z and then um, run to finish the race. So at Y, they're going to head back in the direction of Z, like so. So we actually end up with a right angle triangle inside of here. And I do know a bit of information, but not too much. And they're asking me, what is the bearing from Y to Z? So on this final turn that they make from Y to Z, how far do they run? or how far do they turn. So to figure this out I'm going to need to know an angle and um, one way that I can look at solving this problem is if I break this angle up on a straight line, so I know from here to here it's going to be 180 degrees on the straight line. And If I can figure out any of the information inside of here I can try to get those missing pieces for this little bit here that's missing. So potentially if I find that angle, it can help me, because I know that this is a 90 degree corner up there as well, between north and the line that was going east. Um, and potentially I could also use uh, parallel line rules also. So I might just go in and try to find this angle here. We'll call it X. Now we're already using an X, we'll call this A. So what is the bearing from Y to Z? I'm going to figure out what A is first. So a, I notice that I have a opposite and an adjacent angle, I mean sorry, side, and I'm looking for the angle so I know I need to use an inverse function here. But I have the O and the A, so I am going to use tangent. And I know I'm looking for the angle, so that's what I'm going to cover up. So it's going to be A is equal to tangent inverse of O over A making sure you get your order right, so 2 over 1.5 into the calculator of 2 divided by 1.5 you get 53.13 degrees so I might just round that to 53 because it's pretty close so I know I have 53 degrees inside of here so let's piece this together. For angles at a point, this point here, I've got 360 degrees. I know I've got 90 there. I know I've got 53 here. And I know that I've got 180 degrees on the straight line from there to there. So the one bit that I'm missing in there, if I can find it, will be enough to help me figure out what my bearing is. So I'm going to go, call that B, B is going to be equal to 360 minus 90 minus 53 minus 180 and see what we get. And you should get 37 degrees. So I know that this piece here is 37. So my bearing, the original red line in here, is going to be that 180 degrees from north to south and then 37 degrees further. So the bearing is going to be 180 plus 37 gets me to 217 and that's the bearing from Y to Z. And the next thing they've asked me to do is find the total distance around the running course. Well I know two of them, 2 and 1.5 and I can use Pythagoras again to figure out how far this side is here because I know two of the sides so I could say C is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 1.5 squared square root and I get 2.5 meters 
But that's not the final answer. I need to know the total distance. So that's 2 plus 2.5 plus 1.5. And that gets us 2 to a total of 6 meters around the course. Sorry, it should be kilometers. They were talking about kilometers up here. 6 kilometers. A 6 meter running course wouldn't be very exciting. 6 kilometer running course around course. So that's your final answer there. So again, using Pythagoras, using all that different information, and if I needed to, I could use parallel lines, but I didn't have to. I could sort out that information from there. So the problems from here get more tricky like this, lots of thinking to do, but don't be afraid to try them. And also don't be afraid to just find the little tiny bits that you can. If you can't figure out everything, look for anything that you can solve, a single angle that you can find, or a single side that you can find, and that helps get you some credit towards passing.